Western blotting. Western blotting is a technique using protein specific antibodies to detect target proteins. After gel electrophoresis, proteins are transferred to a membrane and a blocking agent is used to cover places without proteins. The membrane is then incubated with primary antibodies specific to the target protein. Secondary antibodies labeled with enzymes or fluorescent substances are then used to recognize the primary antibodies and produce signals. This allows the identification of the target protein's position and amount. Proteins are transferred to a hydrophobic PVDF membrane to increase interactions with antibodies. Due to the interaction with SDS in gel electrophoresis, the proteins carry negative charge and will migrate from the gel to the membrane under an electric current with the membrane facing the anode. Proteins will attach to the membrane via hydrophobic side chains completing the blotting process. Blocking agents should not have interactions with the target proteins or antibodies. The most commonly used are skin milk, BSA, casein, gelatin, etc. They can block all unoccupied sites on the membrane to prevent non-specific binding of antibodies and reduce background noise. Biotin has a very high binding affinity with avidin or streptavidin. This is often applied in specific binding between molecules. When using biotin-labeled antibodies for avitin-biotin interaction, skin milk and casein, which also contain biotin, should not be used as blocking agents to avoid background noise. PBST or TBST are often used as the buffer in blocking solutions. They are PBS or TBS mixed with non-ionic, non-denaturing detergents such as Twin20 or Triton X100. PBST and TBST can interfere with hydrophobic interactions and reduce non-specific binding between proteins. After blocking, proteins are incubated with primary antibodies specific to the target protein. Antibodies are diluted with the same buffer used for blocking to reduce non-specific binding. Polyclonal antibodies recognize multiple epitopes on the target protein, while monoclonal antibodies only bind to one epitope. Both can be used as the primary antibodies. The antibody dilution depends on the antibody titer. Antibody titer is the greatest dilution of an antibody at which the antibodies still bind to enough antigens to give positive results. The titer value is determined by serial dilution. If the concentration is too high, non-specific bindings will increase. If too low, the target protein cannot be effectively detected. The dilutions for primary antibodies usually fall between 1 to 1,000 and 1 to 5,000. The membrane is then washed with PBST or TBST several times to remove non-specifically bound primary antibodies. Target proteins are then incubated with secondary antibodies specific to primary antibodies. The dilution for secondary antibodies is usually between 1 to 2,000 and 1 to 5,000. Select a secondary antibody that recognizes the host species used for producing the primary antibody. The host animals for primary and secondary antibodies should be different to increase specificity. If the primary antibody is produced in mouse, the secondary antibody should be an anti-mouse antibody from rabbit or other animals. Polyclonal secondary antibodies can bind to multiple epitopes on the target primary antibodies, resulting in signal amplification and increased sensitivity. Target proteins can also be quantified according to the strength of the signals detected. Antibodies are distinguished by their heavy chains into five main isotypes, IgG, IgE, IgD, IgM, and IgA. 
When a monoclonal primary antibody is used, the secondary antibody is selected according to the isotype of the primary antibody. Whereas polyclonal primary antibodies are generally IgG isotypes. Thus, polyclonal anti-IgG antibodies will be the ideal secondary antibodies under such conditions. After the binding of secondary antibodies, the membrane is washed again several times to remove non-specifically bound secondary antibodies. Secondary antibodies are conjugated with different enzymes and produce different colored substances after interacting with different substrates. For example, in ECL, the hydrogen peroxide oxidized horseradish peroxidase, HRP, catalyzes oxidation of luminal that results in emission of fluorescent light at 428 nanometers. Furthermore, HRP can also interact with DAB and hydrogen peroxide to produce brown precipitants, while alkaline phosphatase interacts with BCIP and NBT to produce purple-blue precipitants. Secondary antibodies can also be conjugated to fluorescent dyes, radioisotopes, colloidal gold, biotin, avidin, and streptavidin for different experimental designs and requirements. 